Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rants, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I'm your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shoma, and I'm going to jump in on a rant right quick. Thank you all for jumping on with us live tonight with myself and the great Ben Daniel, who calls a spade a spade. Thank you, as usual, Ben, for jumping on with me. That was dope. Awesome participation in our chat. Over 500 people in the chat at its peak. Thank you all so much. We can't do this without y'all. Um, we love doing it, but when y'all are involved, it makes it so much more fun. So thank you again. Let's just jump in on this topic, which I did mention tonight in the live with Ben. Angel Reese is, ca- Angel Reese is capping. That's the young people word, right? It's another word for lying. Yeah, that's the same word. Lying, capping. She is, well, allegedly. <laughs> it ain't alleged. She contradicted herself tonight in an interview, well, today in an interview, post-game interview of the Chicago Sky Minnesota Lynx game that they lost, 79-74, six straight loss for the Sky. Angel Reese goes for 17 points, 19 rebounds. Numbers-wise, big game. They lost again. They lost the game. They were down nine going into the fourth. Um, The game was tied 62-62 with about seven minutes and change left. And in that time period, Camila Cardoso had six points, two for two from the field, two for two from the line. Angel Reese was 0 for three from the field and 0 f- and committed two turnovers. And they ended up losing by five. I'm not saying it's her fault they lost, but you have a player in Cardoso who was seven for 11 tonight for 22 points, or today, seven for 11 for 22 points, eight of eight from the line, nine rebounds. And yet, Angel Reese took 16 shots. <clears throat> what was interesting about this entire situation, one, of course, is that everyone, everyone, not just some people, everyone knew that tonight, Angel, today, I keep saying tonight, Angel Reese would break the all-time WNBA season rebounding record. Everyone knew it. There wasn't a person in the building that didn't know that tonight would be the night or today would be the day that the record was broken except for Angel Reese. Yeah, right. Take a listen to what Angel Reese had to say in her post-game press conference. Wondering why she never appeared in the post-game presser on Barbie night after Caitlin Clark put that foot to ass and knocked the Chicago sky into next week. But she shows up today for a presser. Another interesting fact, the Chicago sky can't even get their local media to come watch their game. Last I checked, Chicago to Minneapolis is like a one-hour flight. It's not the most expensive flight. Let me see exactly. Yeah, round trip, $118. I mean, it's a six-hour drive, but it's a one-hour, it's an hour flight, hour and a half. Yeah. (laughs) Nonetheless. It's not an expensive flight, so I have to wonder why in the world does the Chicago media not send their people to Chicago games on the road? They do everywhere else, in every other, any other professional franchise, maybe not in the WNBA, but in the NBA, your beat writers go with the team wherever the team goes. But that's not the case. They're doing a post-game presser via Zoom, which I find embarrassing, personally. I think it's actually kind of despicable that, the, that even – I don't care who it is. If you have a major professional sports franchise, including any one of the WNBA teams, if you have a beat writer, the beat writer should be at every single game for that local newspaper and media media members for that particular market. But, yeah, they did it via Zoom. I'm sure they do every press conference with some Zoom attachments to it, but you're on a road game and you're doing a media session via Zoom. What? It is what it is. All that said, she's interviewed. She takes the interview this evening after she goes for 17 and 19. Of course, she's, she claims she has no idea what, what happened today. So let's take a listen to what she had to say. Thank you. Michael Bopel? Yeah, thank you. Angel, um, I know the individual record. Before I continue, I have this recorded at 1.25 because I wanted to be a little bit faster. But I want you to see how long this first question takes. I swear, these questions, it's like I compare it to an attorney for his or her client. If you are 
um, what the hell's the word? If you're examining your client on the stand in a jury in a trial, your questions are typically supposed to be leading your. It's it's they're not allowed. To, you're not allowed to lead, but they're almost like leading type of questions, type of situation. Because you want to get the answer that you want to get, right? I swear when I'm listening to these media members, it's like they're leading for the, the question that they want. They want the answer that they want to get. And in this case, it's this this question took like a minute to ask. At this point, don't mean anything to you. But to do this, and forgive me for asking, but I said do this as a rookie. He even said, I know these numbers don't mean anything to you. Have you been watching, bro? <laughs> Even the media members in, his, in her local market are in delusional land. Are you watching? They don't mean anything to her. If they didn't mean anything to her, she wouldn't have been in the game with three and a half minutes to go in a 25-point loss. Well, when they were down by 25, she'd be sitting on the bench like everybody else was, um, and the backups would be playing in the three, in the three minutes and change to go in the game. Not to mention the demanding of the ball in the post against Atlanta, the demanding of the ball against the Liberty, the, the, and the incessant need to pad up the numbers, all that stuff. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Right. Let's continue. So I'm what I did because so I know, because I'm not on social media. My manager has my social media, so I'm not familiar with what's going on. Remember what she said. I am not on social media. My manager has my social media, so I'm not familiar with what's going on. I want to point that out for a reason, because I'm going to show you something in a little bit. What does she deter? What is, I wonder what she refers to as her social media number one, but this is someone with 4.1 million followers on Instagram. She's never on social media. I'm not on social media, she says. But listen to what she says. I'm not on social media. My manager has this. I'm not familiar with what's going on. You have set the season rebounding record. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> the media member, you don't think she knew this? Do you really don't think she knew this, bro? Of course she knew. Of course she knew. She's capping. Like, get the freaking hell out of here. She is absolutely capping. Record. I mean, uh, and you've done it in the same amount of games, you know, obviously. And he's and, and this reporter doesn't even know what record she broke. He called it the rookie record. No, sir. It was the all-time WNBA record for one season. It was not a rookie record. She long has the rookie record. This is the WNBA all-time record. The, the league has more games than you, but you've done it in, in 32 games. So mm -hmm. I, I, I just wondered, and again, forgive me, I know your focus is on the team, but what it means to you to have been able to immediately transfer such a big strength of your game to the professional league. Yeah, I mean, coming into it, I mean, I just knew my motor. Um, offensive rebounds and defensive rebounds is something that I know I can always do. I knew it was going to translate right away, and that's something that a lot of players don't want to do. Um, a lot of people think it's because I get my own rebounds, but statistically it's not. A lot of people think She's caught. She just got caught. I'm not on social media. My manager handles it. But in the same line, in the same breath, the same breath. The same breath. I know a lot of people think I get it from missing my own shots or whatever. A lot of people think that. Well, how would you know that if you're not on social media? What your manager tells you? Really? Really? Look, you're 22 years old. I get it. You live on this shit. You live on it. All the 20, all the young kids live on social media. I have social media. You know how many freaking friends I have on Facebook? Like 1,700. I think there's a cap of 5,000. I've been on Facebook for over a decade. Shit, 15 years. I got 1,100 followers on Instagram. I never cared about Instagram at all. until Honestly, until... um. I met my wife and, but even beyond that, not even then I cared about, I only started caring about it when I, for my, for my full-time career where, you know, a lot of it is, is marketing through social media and businesses and so, stuff like that. But it's not, it wasn't so I could, you know, get a, a million followers on Instagram or whatever. Now, mind you, I, I, as I've gotten older, I see that, that there's great value to social media that I didn't 
really see when I, you know, years ago because I didn't, wasn't raised on social media. You know what I mean? So it, it's one of those things where, yeah, now I look at social media more, um, but it's really largely business focused. It's not personal focused. My personal page has 1,100 people maybe. Do I even know half of them? I don't even know. Um, my business page probably is a little bit more because it's actually more than that because I do work with people and they follow me because I provide content and information to them. Now, with Come On Now, the podcast, we have over 300 followers now on Instagram. It takes time to build Instagram. I mean, I don't know how people do it so quickly, but I mean, we have vi vi videos with millions, of, you know, over a million views, thousands and thousands. We have, I mean, probably over 7 million views on our on our stuff on Instagram. And uh, it's just, I don't know why it's so hard to get follow people to follow you if, if they're going to co comment on everything. I mean, we have thousands of comments. So it's a little bit weird. Not, But you are 22 years old. You live on social media. Okay, and I'm gonna prove that you live on social media because this is why I call this capping. I'm not on social media, but I know. But people think that I'm good at getting on. Let's re let's re let's re rewind that. I knew it was gonna translate right away, and that's something that a lot of players don't want to do. Um, a lot of people think it's because I get my own rebounds, but statistically, it's not. A lot of people think statistically it is. We're not talking about your defensive rebounds. Obviously, defensive rebounds are not on your own shots. No one's questioning your ability to rebound. Realistically, you're a great rebounder. Absolutely. You, you, you have a nose for the ball. You, 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 you understand the angles and, and that's great. And that's, that makes for someone who's a great rebounder. And I'm not saying you're not a great rebounder. You're a great rebounder, but your rebounding numbers are a lot more padded than they should be because you miss a lot of shots to yourself. It's about 37% of your shots are missed to yourself. That's a lot of rebounds. If you take away 37% of your offensive rebounds, you're not looking at a record right now. You're probably a hundred short. Would you get the record? Potentially, but I'll even say probably you got what eight games left, but let's be real. You know, you, you chop that. I mean, she leads the league in offensive rebounding by a mile because she catches her own shots. And it's, it's true. It's just simply true. I'm not saying it's 75% of the shots, but it's a good 30. It's like 35 to 37%. It changes by the game. So like even today, seven offensive rebounds, three of them were on her own misses. Let's do, the, let's do the most basic of math. Three divided by seven. Three divided by seven. That's 42.8% of her shots. So today, she rebounded 42.8% of her own shots. These are facts. But let's continue. I think it's because I'm the tallest on the court when I'm not the tallest on the court. So just being able to go. No one thinks it's because you're the tallest on the court. That's nonsense. Maybe Maybe when you were in high school. Maybe even in college, but no one, everyone knows you're not the tallest on the court. You're 6'3", and we we all know Camilla's 6'7". We know that there are other players that are taller. We, we know this. Like, come on. Let's, 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 not, let's not continue the cap. Like, that's, no one thinks that you're grabbing rebounds because you're the tallest on the court. Nobody. Nobody. Go down there and being able to bang, doing things that a lot of people don't want to do. Defense and rebounding wins championships, and I've won championships at every level by just doing that. So coming into the league, before I sharpen up on my offensive things, just being able to come in and have that on my shoulder is something I can always do. It's something that I knew would translate. Okay, I have a problem. Before I sharpen up my offense, before, wouldn't you want to sharpen up your offense while you're in season? Wouldn't you want to get become better putting the ball up during the year? Wouldn't it have been a good idea to work on that like heavily while you we were in the break from the Olympics? No, no, no. You were in a, in Europe. You were in Paris watching the Olympics. Probably didn't pick up a basketball for three, for two weeks. I don't know. Maybe maybe you did, but definitely not putting in the work that clearly the Indiana Fever have been putting in. They put in work in in that break. Maybe not the entire break, but they definitely put in work during that break. At least for a week, they were putting in work. Week, week and a half, they were they were working because you can see differences in people's games. You see differences in Caitlin Clark's game, Caitlin Clark's game with the floater. You see a difference in Kelsey Mitchell's game, Kelsey Mitchell's game where she's not like just head down in the ground. She is she's kicking the ball out. She's making some passes. She's doing a lot of other things that she wasn't doing before. But let's continue. Can you guys sort of talk to each other about um, because. Tough starts just happened in this league, to, just to yeah. sort of realize you're still in this thing. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's tough. This is the most losing I've ever done in my life. So 
just being able to kind of stay mentally positive through this. Um, we are that's 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 the bright light of it. We still are in the uh, we still are in the playoffs. Looking forward to that. Um, luckily, everything continues to shape itself out. But we have we have another opportunity to play the game that we love, and we have to come out there and give it give it our all. So I'm just looking forward to the next game and just ways to get better and, and learn from this one. Mike. Hey Angel, congratulations on your. This guy's question is maddening. This is just a, a blowjob question. Jesus Christ. Listen to this question. This question is just like a straight-up ask his session. Are you a reporter or are you trying to go on a date? Like, like, seriously, I interviewed people for many years. Never do I you hear questions like this. You don't hear this type of two-minute, qu this lengthy question, ass-kissing question. Like, ask her. You, you can ask this question without giving her a damn a, a massage? Give me a break. The accomplishment today. Um, I know the focal point has been winning, and that's all you pride. I know the focal point has been winning. No, it hasn't. <laughs> no, it hasn't, bro. Get the get out of here. Have you been watching? This is like like these reporters, reporters. I don't think any of the reporters really. I mean, these people might be people that I don't know run blogs or whatever. I, I don't know what it is, but that's a reporter. That's a reporter set. I know the focal point's been winning. Have you been watching the Chicago Sky play? If Angel Reese is taking 16 shots a game, they're not trying to win. Angel Reese should not take 10 shots per game. She shouldn't take 10 per game. She's not skilled to take more than 10 per game. She probably shouldn't be taking more than eight, if you want to be completely honest and transparent. She shouldn't be taking probably more than eight. Yourself on throughout your entire career is wanting to play winning basketball, but in that same breath, you know, you get your 405th rebound today, you get the all time record in a single season. How do you separate giving yourself grace and understanding the accomplishments that you're doing individually to also knowing that the bigger picture is why do you care about giving yourself? See, that's a weak, that's weak as hell. Competitors, and this is where at least I can appreciate her response, but competitors give myself grace. Why would you give yourself grace? They've lost six straight games, bro. She's shooting 33% since the since the Olympic break. She can't make a shot. Yeah, she had 17 today. She was 6 of 16. Which, as crazy as it sounds, is her second best offensive game since the break. She shot 37.5%. That's trash. That's not good. And you're sitting there talking about grace? Competitors don't want grace. But don't give themselves grace. Get out of here, dude. Get into the playoffs. Yeah, I really don't give myself grace. Um, probably that's probably another problem. Um, just being able to just think about the next game. I don't know the individual accolades that I that I get. I have I've... again. I don't know the individual accolades I get. You just got told by two reporters what what you got. You claim you didn't know. We know that's not true. You just said that the people think that you're getting your own shots. You're rebounding your own shots, even though that's not true. So again, you you this is another claim of you didn't know. Yet, when you were playing against the Atlanta Dreaming, demanding the ball in the post to extend your double-double streak, you didn't know? Really? Really? Capping. This is capping 101. 202, 303, 404. She's capping. This is a straight-up lie. If she didn't know what her numbers were, she sure as shit wouldn't have been demanding a ball up seven with seven seconds to go against the Atlanta Dream. And there's no way in hell. And then she wouldn't have been demanding the ball down 14 with 10 seconds to go against the New York Liberty. Would she? No, because she knew exactly what was going on. And she didn't just demand that ball once. She demanded that ball twice. She got the ball, got quadruple teamed, kicked it back out, which I thought, who knows, maybe it looked like she was trying to get a shot, but it went to half court. Then pops herself out to the wing and is still begging for the ball. No one else is begging for the ball except for her. But she's not aware of her accomplishments. Folks, if you don't see the lies, it's just it's just permeated with cap. It's all bogus. There's nothing true here. This, this is the most this this interview press conference, which we all know she's there because she broke the rebounding record while she says she didn't know she broke the rebounding record to now two different reporters. But after being told them saying that she's then saying that she's <laughs> people, I know people think, well, why would you know people think that you're not on social media? Make up your mind. What is the truth, Angel? Come on. Got it. Um, so just knowing that, just being able to put my head down and win. When it, when I'm, we start winning, and okay, cool. Like, congrats, Angel. We glad you did that. But 
I just want to focus on winning right now. And if I need to continue to do things that are better for this team, um, and I just can't be rebounding, it has to be more. So just being able to give my all is something that I'm just trying to look forward to doing, and, and hopefully it comes out the end good for us. All right, enough. Giving my all. Let's let, let's dig into giving my all. Giving my all. Wouldn't that mean that you were in the and during the break? You wouldn't be two weeks in Europe in Paris or two and a half, however long she was there. Because she was there for a minute. She was doing a basically a branding trip all during that break. So why wasn't she still in Chicago working on her game every day, or three times a week or four times a week? Why wasn't she working with coaches to get better at the things that she's not doing well? So when you sit here and say, I'll do whatever I got to. No, you won't. You're announcing, you, not, you announced a podcast. You're worried about branding deals. You don't, you're not worried about playing ball. Why, 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 are we, why are we capping? If you really were worried about playing ball and getting better, why does it need, why does, I don't get it. Why wouldn't you be working on that during a break? Why wouldn't you be working on that on the off days? I don't know what you're working on. I mean, I know you're working on a podcast, but this is the same person who sits here and says, I'm not on social media. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. This is Angel Reese's Instagram. I don't follow Angel Reese's Instagram. I just wanted to pull it up to, to prove the nonsense when someone says, I'm not on social media. Share screen. So you're not on social media, right? I don't care about your followers. Let's take a look at that is a person. That's a selfie. This is someone took a picture of you. Picture of you before a game. Picture of you before a game. Picture before a game. Posing, posing, posing. This is this is a more candid shot. Let's see here. Posing, posing. This is a selfie. Posing, posing, selfie. Posing, posing. Posing, posing, posing. All these are posing shots. These are these are all scripted, planned poses. I'm, I'm not even going to get into the TikTok, but this is social media that she's not on, according to her, while she has selfies all over social media. Selfies. Selfie. Selfie. I mean, it's like self. It's like selfie heaven. Like, get out of here. Get out of here. You don't care about. You're not on social media, so you take selfies. Then you give the photos to your manager, to then post them for you. Is that what you're telling me? Is that what you're telling people? Is I mean, let's 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 keep it a buck here. I do believe that maybe your manager does take care of some things involving social media for you. I absolutely do believe that. But don't sit here and act like you don't have access to your own social media. Don't sit here and have selfies of yourself in your social media while claiming you're not on social media. That's a bunch of bullshit. And I don't even want to go into the TikTok. I, I have no idea what's on TikTok. I am sure that she has tons of TikTok content that wasn't put up there by her manager. Like I said, that whole interview was a cat. It was all bogus. It was to make herself look like this person who, it's like the kid when you get home from school and you ask your son or your daughter, did you study for your test tomorrow? And they say, yeah, I studied for my test tomorrow. And then they, they take the test and they come back with a D. And you say, well, what happened? You said you studied. Oh, it was hard. Well, no, you didn't study. She's trying to be the kid. She's trying to look like the kid who's studying or says he's, he or she is studying. Except the problem is the proof is right there that she's not studying. So when she says I'm not on social media, well, the proof is right there that you are on social media and that you're taking the photos yourself in selfie photos all over your own social media. Every photo is a posed shot. So almost all, not say all, I'm not going to be absolute, but many, many of them are posed shots. Post videos, post whatever. But you're going to tell people you're not on social media? Like, come on. Come on. If you're going to lie, <laughs> lie to, if people are going to lie when it comes to sports, 
And in today's world, and this is the one thing in which pro athletes today do have a different, it's a different, you know, it, it, it's a different life, right? Pro athletes today don't, did, you know, have to worry about a thousand different things. Old school athletes didn't have to worry about social media, but old school athletes had to worry about lots of other things, like the fact that they traveled on, on commercial jets, a six foot 11 center sitting on a commercial jet. Now they all fly privately, and they've been pri flying pri privately for a very, very long time, charters. But they also had to worry about – God, there were so many things they had to worry about that, they, that, that you don't have to worry about now. You know, you don't have to worry about – all these players, people got entourages and security and stuff like that. Guys back then could go out and not be bothered. But they also were they also put themselves in a bit of danger if they were if they were recognized because of who they were. All that said, there's differences to back then and now. But for sports now, everything is verifiable. Everything has receipts, everything you can see. You know what's going on with these athletes, celebrities in general. You know what's going on. If you wanted to look me up, you could probably find everything you wanted to know about me. No doubt about it. And I am not on that level of celebrity. I'm not a celebrity. I'm just a guy that has a podcast who rants. But if you Google my name, you'll find tons of shit on me. This is what it is. Google has everything. The internet, the internet has everything. But don't sit up here and think people are dumb and sit here and tell folks that I'm not on social. <laughs> but the pin, the pin photo, the first pin photo was a selfie. Come on. Come on now. We're not born yesterday. You're not the kid studying. You're not the kid that's shoot, the hooper that's shooting jump shots, shooting 300 jumpers a day to get better in, his, in his, his or her craft. You're the one sitting here more worried about running a damn podcast while the season's going on, while saying you'll do whatever you got to do, but you won't. You're just going to sit here and you'll get on a podcast and talk about celebrity gossip and other nonsense. But you ain't hooping. You're not shooting jumpers. You're not working on your post moves. I can carry over rebounded, but I can't. I'm I'm not going to worry about getting better in offense. I'm not going to do that. Not yet. Not yet. But yeah, let me know your thoughts. Love to hear what your opinions are on this. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell. Come on now.